Okay, one last time on the subject of the void, and then I will shift gears into deeper and more important waters. But, um, um, you know, I'll make some videos on it in the future, but as far as the, the godless cranium um, video, as I said, it's a decent video, but he kind of still avoided the void. Now, it's probably my fault because I didn't really spell out exactly what I meant by the void. So let me clarify, and I've done it already in one video, but truthfully, I'm not sure if that video is ever going to be posted. So, let me clarify. The void, two-pronged. One is in personal, and the other is in the collective. One is in the individual, and the other is in the collective. In the individual, the void is philosophical and existential. In the collective, it is a set of shared beliefs. Now, I think these two are strongly interdependent. Matter of fact, I'm almost certain of it, that there is a strongly interdependent relationship between a void in the individual and a void in the collective. So, let's first look at the individual. In the individual, it is the void is existential and it is philosophical. Again, all atheism means is a lack of belief in God. Okay, that is not a philosophy of forward momentum. That is not a philosophy of forward momentum. That is simply a negation. Correct? All atheism means is our lack of belief in God. Now, herein lies the potential problem. I'm not saying it's an unsolvable problem, but you need to look at the problem squarely. And that problem is the void. And like I said, you're still avoiding it. All atheism means is our lack of belief in God is not a philosophy of forward momentum. Oh, the depth psychology today the research, ding, 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 the research of today strongly suggests or strongly indicates, again, I didn't say Jesus spoke to my heart, and therefore people need a philosophy of forward momentum, did I? Did I say I was praying one night and Jesus said people need a philosophy of forward momentum? Did I say that? No. I said the research strongly suggests, the psychological research strongly suggests Evidence strongly suggests that people need, not saying want, people need, didn't say they would strongly desire, people need a philosophy of forward momentum, something that inspires you to move forward in the morning. You wake up, you don't feel like facing a day. This is a difficult world with lots of challenges in it. Why do you get up and move forward in the morning? Now, I analyzed Shannon as... You know, uh, having reservoirs of emotional resilience in her, having some emotional health. I think my analysis of her is correct. She's got it pretty together, but I didn't get it right. I, you know, I took an educated guess as to how she got that way. It wasn't a stable family life. Stable family lives usually provide that. They put strength inside of you. That's, that's why a lot of people from broken homes have real struggles in life, because nobody put that strength inside of them. It doesn't just appear inside of a human being. The evidence strongly suggests, the psychological evidence strongly suggests that human beings need tools for emotional resilience. Now, let me just point out, crystal clear, so we're 100% clear on this, Christianity solves deeply if you say God doesn't exist, fine, but you cannot deny the evidence. Christianity, practiced correctly and practiced appropriately, gives you really, really, really powerful tools of emotional resilience. Powerful tools of emotional resilience. Ability to conquer challenging and difficult situations. That is one of the benefits of faith, not the, not the downside of, hey, believe exactly without evidence. It also gives you strength in difficult circumstances. And people need that. That is what the psychological evidence suggests. That's what I meant with the void. Let me spell it out clearly, like I did in the other video. The guy wakes up in the morning in the mystical Norway of tomorrow. You know, I really just can't face another day. I'm so tired of my boss. I'm so tired of, my, of you know, the burdens of life are starting to really wear me down. He turns to his atheist friend. His atheist friend says what? Hey, Buck up, kiddo. All atheism means is a lack of belief in God. And he goes, how has that helped me? Okay, great. <laughs> Thanks. That's really not very helpful. See ya. <laughs> Thanks a lot. 
Now, Christianity gives you powerful tools of emotional resilience. You can use scriptures constructively, internally, to speak to yourself and gird yourself up in difficult circumstances. And I promise you, it works. That same guy, really tired, what do I do? Waking up in the morning, can't face a difficult world. One for particular scripture. In this world you will have trouble. Be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. That helps a little. Then you say, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome by evil with good. That helps a little more. Then you say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you get a little stronger internally. It gives you emotional resilience in difficult circumstances. Then you add, I, having done all to stand, stand ye therefore, which gives you real strength in a crisis. I've stood on that word. All churches teach some variation of this. All churches teach some variation of this. They don't do it that well, but they do do it. They call it standing on the word. They mis misapply it, but it works. It gives you power and resilience and strength in difficult circumstances. Now, add the magic ingredients of faith. Add that magic ingredients to the mix. And all of a sudden, you're a stronger person than you otherwise would have been. And you can conquer adversity in life. Now, how did Shannon conquer adversity in life? I don't know. But there's a science to it. And potentially there are answers outside of religion. I'm just saying religion really honest to God provides those answers. That is honest to God, real strength in difficult circumstances. And you add the ingredient of faith that you think there's a benevolent sick creator who's on your side and will help you and show up in your time of darkest need. And you got it. <laughs> you got it. I swear to God, you'll conquer. I swear to God, you, become, you go from a, a relatively strong person to a really, really tough, resilient, emotionally resilient, tough human being. And I promise you that's what I am. I promise you. I promise you. I'm an extraordinarily tough because of that. I was pretty tough before. Forget it now. Forget it. Forget it. Take all comers. Yeah, eat it for breakfast. Right, little kitty cat? Yeah, eat it all for breakfast. Just sweetest thing on earth. Patting the cat. Sorry, I had to interrupt myself. Okay, now, to number two. In the collective, in the collective, there is also void. I think there's a strong interdependence between the two. I honestly do. Now, again, back to the godless cranium thing. He kind of, he said he's not a Nietzsche expert. Okay, Nietzsche contradicts himself constantly. And what I said Nietzsche said, he actually said. Yes, I'm very well aware of the fact that Nietzsche was an atheist. I'm also aware of the fact that he was an anti-Christian. Famously so. But, it's in somewhere in Thus, Thus Spake Zarathustra where God is dead appears. God is dead appears and a little later on, I believe it's in that text, I know it's revisited in the Will to Power, I'm pretty sure. Um, I haven't read Nietzsche in a long time, but I'm pretty sure that's accurate. He says, God is dead, we have to rebuild him. Or we will be awash in rivers of blood. And the, the, the underlying premise of Nietzsche is that without, the, without Christianity, yes, he was a famously anti-Christian, but Nietzsche also argued against himself. He's awash in contradictions. No such thing as a through line in Nietzsche. None. And it's not really relevant to my main point, but he did say, you know, famously prophesy the nihilism of the 20th century. Now, I, wanna, I, I don't have much time left. The nihilism of the 20th century is shorthand. Communism and fascism is shorthand for two things that appeared when the weakening of mainstream religion in Europe. And those two things function for all intents and purposes like evil state religions. You th and, and they would be really, really extraordinary. You think you don't want to live in a theocracy. They would be really, really extraordinarily worse living under Nazism. Really, really, really awful, really bad. And, for, and I'll go into this in other videos. For all intents and purposes, it functioned like a state religion. It did. Now, the void in the collective. The only potential answer that some, some people have said is humanism. That's great. Human and needs to be defined and spelled out. What, is the, what are the tenets of humanism as you understand them? And I'm, ju I'm just guessing that they're going to sound suspiciously like the teachings of Jesus Christ. Just, just a, you know, educated guess, just step, 
just, you know, call me crazy, but you bet you anything when you spell them out is something that would be useful to people to actually believe and adhere to, it would sound suspiciously like the teachings of Jesus Christ. So, those are the voids. And as far as I can tell, they cannot be avoided, or you're not going to have functioning, happy individuals in your mystical Norway of tomorrow, and you're not going to have a healthy society. Because the sociological evidence also suggests that a healthy society needs. Not would be nice if a healthy society had, it would be really, really nice if we had all these principles, you know, the guidelines and principles that we all agreed upon. That would be really nice. A, a healthy society needs them. Not, it'd be really, really swell if we all agreed about some real sacred values and ideas and beliefs. They need them. Now, I'll go into this in another video, so that's all for now. I'm